Hello everyone and welcome to Lee's Random Number Generation R&D session. So Lee, I don't know anything about this session other than we're going to be taking a look at random number generation. Don't we already have random classes that we can take advantage of? Yes, we do. And uh, they do work very well, but they have their limitations, which is why we're going to be looking at building our own random number generators for use inside of our game. Well, what kind of limitations do they have? Well, it, it depends on which one you're looking at. Right now, there are two um, readily available random number generators available to anybody writing their game inside of Unity with C Sharp. The first one is the one that is provided with .NET for C Sharp, which is built into the to the framework and is part of the uh, system class. So if I click over here in your window, it's part of the system class. We can access it by, say, something like, uh, hold on, I hit my caps lock. Let's create a new uh, variable, call it rand, and we assign it to new random, and then we can give it a seed. So let's say just for 20. This has created a new random number for us, and if I want to use it, I could do something like console dot right line. And then just say or, or rand next and give it uh, no value. So it'll just return a double between the range of 0 and 1. Now I'll go ahead and do a console.read key so it doesn't immediately close. By the way, if you haven't noticed, we've already started off with a blank project. If you're used to Visual Studio, at this point, you should be comfortable with creating your own projects. So go ahead and create a project and just follow along. This is just going to be a console app. We have no need of um, building a full-on Unity project to test this. So we're just going to build our um, random class and all of its methods inside of a console app. And then when we need it in Unity, we'll be able to take that uh, class over later. Okay. So go ahead and build. Make sure I've got no errors. Go ahead and run it. And it returns no, I, a I, number. No, I thought and I thought it was going to be zero to one, <laughs> but it doesn't. So it's a range between, let's go give it the zero to one. So zero dot zero comma one. So min, max. Oh, this one's only going to do zeros. All right. My huh? rant what? gives <laughs> your, your min and max values are taking integers. Mm hmm. They're not returning double because I hit next and not next double. And I can't spell. That's what I meant to hit for zero to one. Next double. Now if we build it. Now I get my zero to one. I just called the wrong um, method inside of my RAND. Did that mean... <laughs> Let me go over that again. What <laughs> it's I all good. To, it, it's all good. I understand. I'm sure they so do too. So basically, there's multiple methods inside of here we can call. Next is going to return an integer between a range. Next byte is a byte between a or, or we give it a buffer, an L full buffer full of randoms. Or we can call on double, which returns a double, which is a zero to one. So what the methods that we're going to be doing are going to be returning floats or doubles. I meant to call next double. It's all good. <laughs> that's what I messed up. Caught me. <laughs> so, but um, yes, this is a built-in functionality that we can get. Unity Engine also has a, a built-in random method that we can seed and pull out of. Now, I can't demonstrate that from inside of a console app. But if we had Unity, you've um, probably have messed with it. You just call random um, dot range, and then you give it a range, and it'll output it. Now, one of the limitations with the Unity's version of random is the fact that while you can seed it, there's only one instance of that um, number. So you're generating a sequence of numbers that is based off of a seed, and every time you request a random dot range, you're getting the next number in that sequence of numbers. You can't reset that sequence of numbers without calling seed, but once you call seed, 
everything that calls random has now been reinitialized with the new seed. So you're going to be getting the next sequence of numbers. Normally, if you want true random numbers that are most, for the most part, random numbers, that'll be fine. The problem that we get into is we don't want, we want a very predictable, predictive way of getting random number sequences. We want our numbers to appear random, but we want to be able to use them in such a way that we get the same sequence every single time we start with a seed. The problem with Unity's editor, um, if you look at it, let's say our train patches with multi-threading, we can't really tell which patch is going to ever be created at what point in time because there are threads and different threads can complete at different times. Now, with our foliage, I would like to be able to randomly place or distribute grass across our train. Now, we could do that using a random number, but because Unity's random number is based off a unified seed for the entire system, the numbers that I get back are not going to be deterministic because if one patch gets called one time before the other patch, but the next time we run it, it's reversed. The order in which the grass has been um, placed based off of those sequences of numbers have been reversed. So we, we're not going to be able to guarantee that we get the same, the same sequence of numbers for each patch while generating our grasses. That becomes an issue. So what we need is something more like what we get with system where we can create instances of our random number. We can seed it individually. So each terrain patch could have its own random number variable that is got its own sequence of numbers. And we give each patch its own seed. And then every time we run, we're always going to get the same sequence of numbers for each patch, which means the grass will show up at the same place at the same time for everything. But this gives us another problem. Our particular instantiation or our um, algorithm used in the system.random is based off of a modified version of Donald Noose subtractive algorithm. This is uh, msdn.com. If you go to their documentation for the random class, it will actually tell you that uh, their version of um, random is a modified version. It's just a random number generator that is using a subtractive um, um, algorithm for generating it. Now, that's great, and we can use it, and we can instantiate it just like we want, so we can have different sequences of numbers for different uses. So if we want, say our combat system that have its own sequence of numbers, but and we've got our train using its own sequence of numbers. We don't want the fact that somebody casts a spell to modify what the grass is going to look like on the next patch that gets generated. So everything has to have its own number. Now, so you're thinking, why not just use system.random? The problem is, is I cannot guarantee that this algorithm is going to be the same for every platform. So I don't know if .NET and Mono have implemented the random algorithm exactly the same. So while we're building in this console app, it runs one way, but once we build it against the Mono um, framework, it might give us a different se sequence of numbers for the same seed. Where this becomes an issue is Let's say we're building something that has builds for a mobile device, you know, Android, uh, iOS, whatever else comes down, um, the Wii, the PS3, the uh, web build, PC, um, all the different builds that Unity supports. And then we're looking at doing servers. What if the servers are running on um, a PC or a Windows-based PC using .NET? Maybe we end up having some servers that are running on Linux. Now, what implementation of the algorithm are they running? We can't guarantee that every build in every application is going to generate the exact same sequence of numbers given a seed. 
So by writing our own random number generators, we can use that generator, that code, in every single one of our builds for every platform that we may go to. And then we'll know for sure that every time we see that particular number generator with a number, the sequence of numbers that we're going to get out of it will be exactly the same for all platforms, which is the main reason why we even look at writing our own random number generators. Okay. So where do we start though? Well, when you're going to write random number generators, it's, an extremely complex um, field of study, actually. I, I spent an entire day doing nothing but researching a bunch of random number generators. They're usually um, classified by the type of algorithm that they're using, such as linear, um, a modified for uh, Fibonacci set. And if I murder names, I apologize. I'm terrible with pronouncing names that aren't more than five letters or that are <laughs> more than five letters long. So, but, um, so there's all these different types of algorithms that you can use for generating um, numbers, but they're usually classified by two different types, true random numbers which means every time you go and request a new number, you really do get something that is random and unpredictable and there is no sequence. That is above and beyond what we want to do for a game because we want to be able to know that, or at least our game, that every time we start with a seed, that the sequence of numbers that we get is going to be the same. Now, if we were making some sort of gambling card game or roulette, then yes, we would want to look at using a truly random uh, number generator. Well, later on in, in our combat system, would we want to get away from... I'm just asking. I mean, would we want to... In the future, maybe. Initially, no, definitely not, because we'd want to be able to replicate the uh, inputs for our system. We'd want to be able to know that when we're trying to test out and prove that this gets cast at this point, if we start with a set number of generations. If we go, okay, something's wrong here, then we can go back and look at the sequence of random numbers and go through all the equations and go, okay, well, this is what should have happened. This is the part of that sequence that broke. If it's truly random, we'll never, ever be able to replicate that state again. Okay. So you'd have you'd have to hope on it. So even um, like casino games and stuff, usually they start off with some sort of pseudo random number generator, so that they can predict, test everything, make sure it's working a hundred percent before they swip, um, swap over to a true random number generator. Now, those are the two major or the two types of random numbers. True random numbers and pseudo random. Pseudo random means they are deterministic. We can start with a seed, and when you start with that seed or whatever you put into it, you're always going to get the same sequence of numbers over again. So that's pseudo random. Now, the next way they're broken down is usually by quality. They consider the numbers that come out of a, a number generator by quality. That means how how well of a distribution do you get? Because there, while they are random, if your number generator is supposed to generate numbers between 0 and 1, and 90% of it, the time it's generating numbers between 0 and 0 0.4, it's not a very high quality number generator because it's not distributing the numbers evenly across the full range. Another um, method of determining the quality of the number is how long of a period does your ne um, number generator have? The period being the length or the number of um, yeah, the number of numbers or basically how long does the generator sequence of numbers go before it repeats in a in its entirety. So if you've got a generator that has like a period of five, every six number is going to be the first number over again and it's going to repeat. So it's almost like doing a uh, a uh, modulus 
on your random numbers when it always repeats. That's that's considered the period. The longer the period, the longer um, you're going to be able to go without getting duplicated sequences of numbers, which means you have a higher quality number generator. Now, they usually consider the qualities ranging from poor to good to excellent, and then there's cryptographic quality number generators. Now, these are in a whole class of themselves, and the math behind them are above and beyond anything that we want to get at in the game level, mostly because they're used for things like encryption of messages and password uh, hashes and things of that nature. We don't really need that level for a game. But we do want to have a number generator that has a very long period. Now, we're going to be using two methods of number generation. One is not a true number, random number generator. It's actually a hash. And that's the one we're going to be covering first. The next one after that is going to be a um, true or a pseudo random number generator, a real one th that is based off an algorithm called the Well 512. The Well 512 stands for well distributed, um, equal distributed or equal distributed lin or long period linear. That's a mouthful, but. Uh, <laughs> Basically, the short of it is that this thing is very good at giving you a very well distributed range of numbers, and it has an insanely long period to the point where it is 2 to the 512th power, which means that the period is longer than the number of particles in the universe, which is pretty crazy when you think about it. So my machine would literally take, a, they say, according to the paper, it was a Google of uh, years for an average computer to calculate it. If we bring up the calc, just to show you how insane of a number this is. Oh, can't size that one. Uh, scientific. All right. So... If you take 2 and we raise it to the power of 512. So this is the number of um, numbers that you're going to get out in a sequence before the sequence repeats. Now, my computer can do about 7 million. Whoops, I'm still backspace work. So my computer can do about 7 million random numbers a second. And if you divide that by 60 seconds in a minute, by 60 minutes in an hour, by 24 hours in a day, by 365 days in a year, and let's just go by a millennium, so by every thousand years. So this is the number of thousands of years it would take my computer to get through every number in a sequence. It's insane. But more than well enough um, good use for a game, I would say. So I'm very happy with this algorithm, and this is the one that we're going to go with is um, the topic of this R&D later down the road when we get to it. So we're going to be covering several different um, ways of doing random numbers. Some of them are going to be simple hashes, which basically all a hash is is a widely different, uh, differing number returned for a given input. The nice thing with a hash is every time you put in a number, you put that same number in, you're going to get the same hash back out. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, do simple hashes for a couple of things just because they're extremely fast. They're robust enough to give us enough accuracy for what we need them for in this case. But when we need a long sequence of um, different numbers, we'll get away from the hashes and we'll use the Well 512 algorithm. Okay. So we'll go through that. But 
bef- one of the things we're going to do before we dive into these different hashes and the uh, Well 512 is we need to be able to build a framework that we can use to test the outputs of sequences of numbers. So we'll want to be able to go and tell the system, give me a thousand uh, of these numbers or give me a million of these numbers. And we want to look and see what the average number is returning for all the numbers. We'll want to look and see how well they're distributed across the range of numbers. We're going to use zero to one as our benchmark. So we're going to look and see how well it's distributed between zero and point one and point one and point two all the way up through point nine to one. So we'll get a, uh, a, a good, un, um, feel of how well they're distributed across that range. It will also keep track of how many duplicated numbers show up inside of a sequence of numbers. Because with our um, our hashes, we're supposed to get widely different numbers based um, out based off of a given input. But if our hashes are returning a whole lot of duplicates, then they're not meeting their intended purpose. So we'll have to refine that. And we're going to start off with a very simple hash after we get our framework in place. And I'll show you the problems with it. And we'll go stage by stage and refining it, making it a little bit more robust before we jump over that 512. So that's pretty much what I wanted to get over in the intro. In the next video, though, I want to start uh, work on building our test framework. Sounds fantastic. All right. Well, with that, that is going to wrap up this video. And thanks a lot.